BBC Radio York. Well, we, uh, I certainly last spoke to them uh, between, I think it was between Christmas and New Year. A team from North Yorkshire is part of a convoy of about 200 vehicles which have been making their way to Gaza over the last month. The ambulance left York at the beginning of December to take medical aid to the people living there. They've had a few things put in their way, a few hold-ups along the way. One involved the Egyptian embassy and then getting on a ferry, then Turkey got involved. Uh, they are now nearing their death. Destination For the latest, let's talk to uh, Heather Stroud from uh, North Yorkshire. I didn't think we'd be able to get hold of them. Heather, good afternoon. Good, well, good evening. Yes, good, good evening for you, absolutely. <laughs> um, you've left sub-zero temperatures in North Yorkshire. I would imagine the weather is uh, really quite uh, hot where you are. How far are you from Gaza? We're 40 kilometres. Um, but we are in a compound um, that we can't leave. So... So while the distance isn't very far, um, until politically we get permission to go, then it, it's close and far at the same time. I was just going to say, so so near. So what will yes. what will happen now? Presumably, this has to go through the Israeli authorities. I, I imagine they'll be involved. What's happening is when we drove to Aqaba, we weren't allowed to cross um, to Egypt from there. So we went back to Syria. Then we went to a place called Latakia in Syria. A ship took all of the vehicles, so we were separated from the vehicles. We were going to follow on a ship, but then it was decided we were going on aeroplanes. So last night we arrived on an aeroplane um, and were held in the customs hall for close to 12 hours, um, which created a massive protest amongst people. Um, and we were just the first group. Um, and I think because of the protest, we were allowed out. So we then had a few hours in a hotel, um, and then we were brought to the compound this morning. So we're actually feeling very relaxed after all we've gone through because we're back with our vehicles. Now, we're still waiting because there were three other flights. One flight, the flight after us, the engine blew, so they had to go to Damascus, um, but they've now arrived. Um, and then the, the group that were left, they, they managed to charter a flight from Greece. So I think they've arrived, um, but they haven't arrived at the compound. I think, um, I think the last time we, we, we spoke to you, we were getting information through that um, Turkey was very much uh, acting as a, a sort of a go-between um, and trying to smooth things along the way. Um, you're there uh, with the organisation Viva Palestina. You've collected people along the way. The convoy has got ever bigger because it was 70 left London. I think you're up to about 200 vehicles now. Yeah. Um, who, yeah. Who's doing the negotiating for you now to make sure that you actually get the medical equipment where it needs to be? Well, I think the fact that we are with the vehicles means, and the vehicles came on a ship that was um, heavily funded by Turkey. So Turkey's very involved. Um, I mean, George Galloway is still involved in negotiations. And um, so, yeah, that's as much as we know, really. How confident are you that you're going to be able to get out of the compound and, and, and make the sort of final bit of your journey, the 40 kilometres to Gaza? So, sorry, I didn't catch that. How confident um, are you that, that you're oh, going confident. to... Yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm sure we will get there. I mean, the very fact we've been reunited with the vehicles. Now, one of the things Mike just pointed out to me, which is why I didn't quite hear what you said, when the ship came, the Israelis extended their um, exclusion zone. So they followed the ship, um, and it was somewhat intimidating, but the Turkish captain refused to go off course and came straight here. So Turkey has been an incredible partner in this project. Well, I think with them we'll get there. Well, I'm sure that you will let us know. I'm sure Carol, who's coordinating with us in York, will let us know when you do reach Gaza. Yeah. Uh, of course, yeah. this is a humanitarian mission. Um, people from all across Europe that you've picked up along the way uh, and the Middle East as well. Thank you very much for talking to us. And uh, right, I hope everything you. works out the way you wanted to. That's uh, Heather Stroud there talking to us uh, live 40 kilometres away 
from uh, Gaza nearing the end of the journey. But as you heard Heather say there, uh, they are actually being held in a compound at the moment. Obviously, uh, we'll keep you up to date. And uh, all being well, uh, we might be able to catch up with them tomorrow and uh, hopefully they might be able to tell you that they've managed to get that uh, medical equipment to the people that they believe need it in Gaza. BBC Radio York. Now, uh, we've been following a team from North Yorkshire who have been on their way to Gaza with uh, an ambulance. They set off from York on the 4th of December and they are taking uh, emergency medical supplies. Uh, there's been lots of adventures along the way. We spoke to Heather Stroud on yesterday's programme. We're hoping to catch up with the team uh, throughout this afternoon's programme because uh, earlier today they were about 40 kilometres away from Gaza. Uh, we're joined now by Janet William, who is... Uh, one, well, she's uh, she's married to Mike, who is um, out on the convoy, Mike William. Uh, Janet, good afternoon to you. Hi, it's Janice. Oh, Janice, sorry, yes, I do okay. apologise, I do apologise. Um, Janice, just tell us, um, there was a bit of a, a scary moment last night. When we spoke to Heather yesterday, um, they were obviously being kept in the compound um, and they didn't actually know, you know, whether they were actually going to get any further. Um, what's the latest development at the moment? Because I know well, you're... the across... latest development is actually fantastic because we've just had a text from Heather, some vehicles are moving, the pace is snails, but we are moving. So how far are they away from Gaza? Well, they're still 40 kilometres away, but, I mean, clearly once they get moving on the road, they could do that in about half an hour. We're talking 25 miles here, uh, half an hour, 45 minutes. I mean, my concern is that it's now, must be getting dark, and will they be allowed in once it is dark, and will, or will they have to park outside for the night? Well, hopefully we might be able to find out because uh, we maybe contact them in uh, just over half an hour's time. Good, uh, what, what happened to them last night? Because they had a bit of a frightening experience last yeah, night, didn't they? Yeah, it was dreadful last night. The, uh, uh, the pol police, the Egyptian riot police, seemed to have weighed in really heavily and there seemed to be quite a lot of uh, people on different bits of Twitter claiming that there were also plain clothes Egyptian police actually in the compound where all the vehicles and the convoy people were and that they actually started it by throwing stones and bricks, and then, unfortunately, there was some retaliation. I mean, I can't approve of it, but I can understand it. And uh, some riot police were hurt, and so were some members of the convoy. I understand that some convoy members were taken prisoner, but they have now actually been allowed back um, and to join the convoy. So all the convoy members are now back with the convoy, although some of them have been hurt. They've had head wounds. They've had... Um, other things, mostly head wounds caused by throwing bricks and stones. It was very, very unpleasant and quite scary. I mean, our three stayed carefully in the ambulance, obviously, but they did have to open up their, the supplies that are supposed to be for the people of Gaza to use as first aid for um, wounded convoy members, bandages, antiseptic ointment, that sort of thing. So they were uh, not involved with the, the melee, although they were obviously surrounded by it, and it must have been a very frightening experience. They said physically they were all right, but I think they were obviously quite upset. There's a film in the making here, I think, because of all the experiences that, uh, you know, the convoy yeah. has gone through because, yeah. obviously, you know, people have joined the convoy, convoy along the way. Well, thank you very much for, for bringing us up to date and uh, hopefully we might be able to catch up with the team a little bit later on, uh, maybe when they do get into Gaza. But as you say, we don't know whether they'll be allowed straight through or whether they'll have to wait outside. So That's right. Heather is um, texting back, so obviously at the moment she does have some reception, mm. at least on one of her phone numbers, so it is worth keeping on trying. OK, we shall do our best. Janice Lovely. William, thank, thank you, you very, very much. much indeed and obviously we will bring you up to date with that. Um, it would be great if we could actually get the timing right and uh, we speak to them as they do actually reach their destination. Uh, been on the road since the 4th of December. <laughs>